Hey everyone and welcome back to a new video. So like many of you, I've woken up this fine Sunday to hear that there's been some rather seismic updates to the law of the 41st millennium. We have the 10th edition Adepts Custodes Codex coming out later this month and a leak has revealed that there's a story in that codex that shows that we have female Adepts Custodes. And needless to say, that has caused quite the conversation online and in this video I just want to show what has actually been leaked from the codex itself and just share a few of my thoughts. I'm sure you have thoughts, the community certainly has thoughts and first and foremost I would love to hear them in the comments section below but just come in with the, the right attitude and tone of voice and be ready for a conversation because uh, I certainly don't want people sort of rage baiting in the comments section but anyways let's jump in and show the excerpt that the community has been going through. Now now, this is a story from the new Adepts Custodes Codex and I do want to say that separating it from the, the various conversations that are happening online, this is actually a really good story because it shows a very nuanced side to the blood games that the Custodes play out amongst one another. Um, the Custodes are charged with defending the Emperor of Mankind and so they want the defences around the Emperor to be as secure as possible and so they will always test their own defences by sending Custodes out to act as lone opera or to engage other parties to test those defences themselves all with the intention of making those defences stronger and kind of improving on weaknesses they spot. And this story effectively shows that to the extreme because it shows custodian Calides Toravalia Kesh, the female custodies in question, kind of commissioning a ship from Battlefleet Solar. And at first, it's all very ominous. The crew are on edge and she's kind of lingering in the shadows and then slowly starts speaking up about a, a payload that they're currently carrying. And it's all very ominous and very suspicious and then suddenly the revelation is kind of revealed that she is carrying out a blood game and her intention is to drop a cyclonic warhead on the imperial palace itself well, not to drop it actually to teleport it in and kill the emperor of course she doesn't want to kill the emperor but it's designed to kind of test that scenario were it ever to happen and it's a really great insight into the mindset of the custodies during these blood games because at some point she's even kind of sitting there thinking you know she's stolen this warhead she's killed the tech crew that have kind of arranged the teleportarum she's doing everything to kind of make sure that she's giving the Imperial Palace a true test of its capabilities, but also quietly hoping that the Captain General or someone at least has a countermeasure in mind, because if not, she's about to do what the forces of chaos and every other enemy of the Imperium has failed to do so far. So it's a really great insight completely separate to the conversation that's happening around uh, Calades' gender. But of course, that is the topic of conversation. And I do want to say that I think where this conversation always comes up around female space marines and now with female custodies, it always seems to me to come down to this debate between is this story or is it kind of like scripture? What is the law and how can law be flexed and adapted? For some people, really to put it bluntly, I think when they've invested so much time and energy into a story and that story changes, it can really kind of throw an emotional wave. And I don't think that's that's bad in and of itself. It happens with lots of fandoms and things that we invest our time in. But with 40k in particular, sometimes people I think get too attached and they treat law that goes back long, long ago almost as if it's written scripture that can't be changed and it has to be the cornerstone of the law going forward. Personally, I like the fact that Games Workshop are clearly experimenting with something new. It's a small gesture, but a meaningful one. And I think you have to do these things with the universe because otherwise things grow stale and they just don't, if you don't evolve, you die. That's how I think a lot of things happen. And you have to remember as well, the story here is a sandbox for the models, the products that Games Workshop produces. And so they constantly need to mold the universe to reflect the audience they want to kind of capture the attention of. But at the end of the day, I think they have to try new things. They have to keep pushing the law in different directions, however small those gestures might be or feel, because Otherwise, people will go and look for the things that 40K or Warhammer in general is missing in other settings. They might, for example, think, 
you know what, I Kill Team doesn't really offer the the mix of models and mechs and, and, and other units that Infinity does. So I'm going to go and play Infinity. Or I really wish Battlefleet Gothic would come back, but they haven't offered that, so I'm going to go play Dystopian Wars. Or I don't like the fact that, you know, when I collect these models, they're all guys in power armor. So I'm going to instead go over to this game where it feels a little bit more true to the, the game I want to play and the models I want to collect and paint. That's what this is all about. It's a hobby. And I just think some people cling on to these cornerstones of law a little too tightly when they don't need to. When in reality, this is just a healthy exploration of something new. And Games Workshop can kind of keep a, an eye if you will on the conversation to see is this taking the hobby warhammer overall in a direction we want to go and i think for the most part this is kind of a brave bold step towards that sort of thing it doesn't mean however that we are getting new female custodies and that's just a, a point blank fact we for example know that there are female necrons in the law because they appear in a uh, books like The Infinite and The Divine by Robert Rath. But to my knowledge, there's not a single female Necron model. So it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to see new female space room models, new female depths custodies. Not that there's anything necessarily wrong with that. I just think that there's a difference between a change in the law and a change on the tabletop. But at the same time, the hobby is a very personal one. If you want to make female custodies right now, you can do it and you didn't need permission from the law to do that. And to that extent, we should all be aware that the hobby very much exists in our own minds at some point. And we kind of own our own interpretation of the law that Games Workshop puts out. And so to some extent, you know, people are always going to be free to kind of do their own thing. It's interesting that the conversation online is now people saying, oh, I'm going to hang on to my version of the law or this isn't for me and that. In a way, that's kind of just a, a reflection of how the law has always been. People have always been free to look at the bits they like and embrace them and try, kind of ignore the stuff they don't like. That's that's a healthy relationship with this hobby, in my view. But everyone has a choice. And I think giving people more options in the law and opening up that law a little bit is really just a healthy thing at the end of the day. And if people are calling out, you know, pseudoscience from you know, early editions of the law that have since changed or retconned. I think to me, it doesn't, it shows a kind of a lack of openness to kind of explore new things. I understand why people do it. I understand it feels tough, but at the same time, things have to change. Um, and this is a, again, a very meaningful gesture, but it's a small one. And we will continue to see things like this in other corners of the hobby, both in 40K and Age of Sigmar. And really, it's for us personally to decide on how we respond. But all Games Workshop cares about at the end of the day is that more people are coming into the hobby, collecting their models, doing what they want with them and playing games. And as long as that's happening in a really fun environment, the law can do what the law wants and they'll keep kind of expanding it to kind of make it as attractive to people as possible. The other thing that I'm also conscious of is that this conversation we're having online is very much because the old law, or at least a very big cornerstone of it for some people, is giving way to new law. And we have to remember that the new law, if you want to call it this for a moment, will become the old law for new players. New players coming into the game now will come in with female custodies in the law. It won't be a big transition for anyone or a big thing. And in 10 years time, new players coming into Warhammer may see an entirely unrecognizable universe by many people's standards compared to what we have today. That's what I mean by you have to change things to evolve and adapt because otherwise you just become irrelevant or unattractive compared to all of the other games and universes and things out there. We've only got so much attention and certainly only so much money. And so Games Workshop needs to kind of create an environment that opens up new doors things to happen for people to think creatively and get attached to the universe in which all of these games are set but you know I'm only one voice in this conversation and I, you know I just want to end by saying however you feel about this there's a right way to express the opinion and there's a wrong way to express the opinion and I think coming in and articulating a point of view even if you're against something like this can be a lot more useful for the conversation than coming in with pitchforks and, and trying to burn down the hobby altogether. I just don't think it does anyone any good. And ultimately, we're all responsible for our own um, responses to these sorts of things. So yeah, I'm just gonna end it there. I think it's a really positive move. Obviously, 
we're not seeing new models yet. They may come in time, but right now I think we should take it for what it is, which is a really good story with a rather massive kind of revelation for um, for custodies in terms of who makes up the 10,000. But that's all it is. Nothing less and nothing more. Um, but I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. So do share them, share them with a kind of open mind and be ready for a conversation. And uh, yeah, we'll see what comes about in future. But until then, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to. And uh, I hope to see you in the next video. But until then, take care.